Welcome all at today's DEFCON presentation with the title Building the Motor Control Platform with STSPIN32 F0 Family Drivers. My name is Yuri Keperda and I'm Product Marketing Engineer at ST Microelectronics. Let's warm up with a couple of poll questions. The first question is, do you have any experience with integrated architecture, meaning integrating a microcontroller and gate driver? So there are two answers, yes and no. And I will come back with the results after a few slides. Let's start with a review of the motor control architecture. The brain of the system is a wide range of MCUs based on STN32 family. The K driver provides the necessary strength and timing in order to drive the bridge inverter, either made of MOSFETs, typically for low voltage applications, or it is made of IGBTs, typically for high voltage applications. ST gate driver portfolio does include half bridge gate drivers represented by L6400 family and L6300 family with capability up to 4 amps. Recently, we developed also three phase integrated gate drivers under ST drive family name for both high and low voltage applications. You can find low voltage, high voltage MOSFETs. IGBTs and also ASPECs for inverter bridge in the ST portfolio. Now, there are two options how we can integrate the motor control system. We can integrate the MCU together with gate driver and leaving the power stage discrete. Second option would be integrated gate driver with MOSFETs or IGBTs on one single package. Let's have a look on these two options from the application point of view. The first option in terms of integration is called ST spin family, and the typical use would be the application where we have portfolio of products with very similar requirements for MCU, but different requirement on the power stage, meaning the output power. The IPM SLIM modules and also PWD drivers represents the second option. The very similar output power is the common characteristic for this architecture and leaving the freedom on MCU selection based on the features of the system. Quick summary of the microcontrollers for motor control applications. ST is currently offering several lines of MCUs. The integrated solution is represented by ST Spin32 family. For more tailored application, the selection does include high performance MCUs, including the latest STN32 MP1. Next line includes mainstream MCUs and the ultra low power line is dedicated for low IQ sensitive applications. The last line does include also the wireless capable MCUs. So now let's check uh, the first question. Uh, I will repeat the question. Do you have any experience with integrated architecture, microcontroller and gate driver? Oh, it's uh, almost tight. 47.6 uh, uh, is the answer yes, and 52.4 answered no. So I think that's a good starting point. So now we will discuss uh, system in package solutions for motor control. The PWD family together with ST Spin32 F0 represent the system in package technology. Currently, there are two devices from PWD family available on the market, and the third one 
is in development phase close to the launch for the mass market. The PWD family drivers are targeting industrial market, factory automation, fans, pumps and blowers, home appliances, cooking hoods and gas heaters, and also power supply units. The PWD 13F60 is a high density power driver integrating gate drivers and four channel power MOSFETs in dual half bridge configuration. The integrated power MOSFETs have a low RDS on of 320 milliohm and a 600 volt drain source breakdown voltage. The embedded gate driver's high side can be easily supplied by the integrated bootstrap diode. The input pin's extended range allows an easy interfacing with microcontrollers, DSP units, or whole effect sensors. The device is available in compact QFN package. The PWD 5F60 is an advanced power in system package driver, which integrates gate driver and four N channel power MOSFETs in a compact QFN package. The integrated power MOSFETs have RDS on of 1.38 ohm and a 600 volt drain source breakdown voltage. The embedded gate driver features two comparators that can be used for peak current control or over current protection, integrated bootstrap diodes, fast decay or slow decay, on-board constant off-time peak control, under-voltage protection, and low side and high side. 3.3 to 15 volt compatible inputs with hysteresis and pull-down. The evaluation board EVAL PWD 5F60 demonstrates how to use the PWD 5X60 drive to drive a single phase load in full bridge topology. This allows a control of both directions and the amount of the current flowing into the load. The typical application that can benefit from the high integration of the PWD 5F60 are, for example, single phase BLDC motors or fans. The board has a very small footprint and optimized layout thanks to the integrated features of the PWD 5F60 and it can be simply run by applying the supply voltage and a direction signal. Before we move to the next chapter, as T spin 32F0 family, we have here also second poll question. The question is, do you have experience with first answer, low voltage motor control design, second, high voltage motor control design, third, both, and the four is obvious either. Mm. We started today's presentation with a motor control architecture. We will focus on the second option as highlighted in terms of integration. This option does integrate a microcontroller together with gate driver into single QFN 7 by 7 millimeter package compared to the first option combining power stage together with the gate driver as discussed on previous slides where we introduce PWD family drivers. Let's have a look what we have under hood. The integrated microcontroller is standard 32-bit STN32 ARM Cortex-M0 from the ST standard STN32 portfolio. It is the same silicon as STN32 F031C6. The analog and power conversion provides three-phase gate driver with 600 milliamp sync source capability 
up to 45 volt for low voltage family and one amp or 350 milliamp gate current capability for high voltage family depending on subversion. The low voltage version of ST Spin 32F0 includes also 3.3 volt buck converter, which provides the supply for microcontroller and 12 volt LDO for the gate driver supply. As I mentioned on the previous slide, currently we have two main group of ST Spin 32F0. Low voltage is rated up to 45 volt and the high voltage group, we decided to split the family into subfamilies. 250 volt subfamily and 600 volt subfamily. All drivers can be used in sensor or sensorless configuration and we are providing for each part number dedicated firmware for the evaluation. The microcontroller STN32 F031 is used across all ST Spin32 F0 products. The 32-bit M0 ARM core-based architecture has clock frequency of 48 MHz, 4 KB of SRAM, and 32 KB flash for the program. The number of GPIOs depend on version, and it could be up to 20. Five general purpose timers, including dedicated timers for motor control with complementary outputs, ensures the best possible performance. The A2D converter has up to nine channels, which are multiplex, and they can be used externally or internally together with built-in op-amps for current sensing. The SPI, UART, and I I2C commission protocols are available. The last feature is the serial wire debug. All products from ST Spin32 F0 family have an extended temperature range from minus 40 Celsius degree up to 125 Celsius degree. Now there is a time to uh, share the second question from the poll meaning the results. So, actually, uh, it looks like I was not able to get uh, any results uh, compared to previous question. So there is a small hiccup here. Nevertheless, let's move to next chapter uh, which is ST Spin 32F0 low voltage. Um, currently, we have three options of low voltage ST Spin 32F0 drivers. The low voltage ST Spin 32F0 family has a several common electrical parameters. Voltage range is up to 45 volt. On the lower side depends on the version, but it can be as low as 6.6 .6 volt. Built-in buck converter, which provides 3.3 volt supply for the microcontroller. LDO, which provides 12 volt supply for the gate driver. All drivers of ST Spin32 F0 family have a standard set of protections, under, volt under voltage lockout, overcurrent protection, and thermal shutdown. There is also extended temperature range, as I mentioned previously. We use 7x7 QFN compact package. Here we have a side-by-side -side parametric comparison of all ST Spin32 F0 drivers. The operating voltage range starts at 8.2 volt at ST Spin32 F0 and the under voltage lockout was lowered down to 6.6 .6 volt for the A and B version. The MCU, LDO, and buck converter are the same across all three drivers. The major difference among those three drivers is the number of available GPIOs and number of op-amps. 
since we were pin limited, there is a trade-off between those two features. The STSPIN 32F0 version provides 4 op-amps and 15 available GPIOs. The B version offers 3 op-amps and 16 GPIOs. And finally, the B, ver the B version has the highest number of GPIOs, 20, and only one op-amp as a trade-off. Both A and B version have also bootloader. ST provides the ecosystem for the development of motor control applications. The evaluation board allows you rapid prototyping and quick setup to evaluate and demonstrate the proof of concept. The ST Eval Dash SPIN 3201 is based on ST SPIN 32F0 with FOC in free shunt configuration. The firmware is available for sensor and also sensorless application. The ST Eval Dash SPIN 3202 provides FOC and a six step commutation algorithm in one shunt configuration. The firmware is again available for sensor and sensorless application. The ST SPIN 32F0B is on ST Eval Dash SPIN 3204 evaluation board in one shunt configuration with six-step commutation firmware. I skipped the STEVAL-ESC002V1 since it is reference design for ESC rather than generic evaluation board. This evaluation board has STSPIN32F0 on it, and it goes with high-speed six-step commutation firmware. You may find this table helpful in case you are looking for a reference documentation and available firmware. The Eval Kit Robot One is an evaluation kit offering a ready to use servo brushless solution. The Maxon motor, which is included in the kit, offers a very high torque density and very low cogging torque. This motor together with an incremental encoder and ST spin 32 F0A running field oriented control with closed loop positioning is an excellent choice for reliable and high precision position and speed control. The STM32 motor control workbench is a graphical user interface software running on PC that reduces the design effort and time needed for the STM32 PM SM FOC firmware configuration. The user generates a project file through the graphical user interface, and the same GUI allows you a real time monitoring of the system and changing the key variables. More details about software tools, including the real application, will be presented also in the second half of today's presentation by my colleague Rosario. I would like to share with you also an application which is slightly different than three-phase BLDC. The STVAL SPIN3201 supports also the application with brush DC motors with an incremental decoder. The brush DC motor library with graphical user interface allows you speed and position control. The communication is performed through the UART. Now we are moving to the next chapter, chapter which covers high voltage ST spin 32 F family. The next step in the evolution of the ST spin 32 F0 family is a high voltage option. As you can see from the block diagram, the architecture is very similar. The high voltage drivers have the same M0 core based microcontroller. The gate drivers are made in the BCD6 offline technology, which provides very good robustness, and I'll share more details in a few minutes. From the development point of view, the key is 
that the entire development ecosystem is the same as for low voltage drivers. Currently, there are four options of high voltage drivers, two versions of 150 volt subfamily and two drivers from the 600 volt family. They are pin to pin compatible. Also, high voltage options are offering FOC and a six step commutation algorithm and compatibility with STM32 ecosystem. Both versions can save up to 60% of the space on the PCB due to the system in package solution, meaning integrating STM32 Cortex M0 micro together with high voltage gate drivers. Few key parameters for the STSPIN32 F0600 family. The 601 version can provide up to 350 milliamp gate current and the 602 version up to 1 amp for higher power applications. It has integrated bootstrap diode and it is offered in two package versions. The other parameters are the same as other ST Spin32 F0 family drivers. Similarly, the ST Spin32 F0250 has two options in terms of gate current capability. The 251 provides up to 350 milliamp and 252 up to 1 amp gate current, and also two package options are available. You may ask the question why we develop 250 volt tolerant drivers. These drivers can be used in the high power tools, garden tools, industrial pumps, and industrial automation. Electrical characteristics of the gate driver are the key parameters from the robustness point of view. The integrated bootstrap diode with zero static drop provides not only bill of material savings, but also improvement in the electrical behavior. The gate drivers, both high side and low side, are protected by under voltage lockout. The drivers have interlocking cross conduction prevention, which has a direct impact on the reliability and longevity of the system. The PCB layout, especially the ground rounding for the high power application is critical. The gate drivers have separated GND pins for logic and low side power. The gate drivers of ST Spin32 F0 high voltage family were successfully tested with below ground spikes 100 volt and more. As I mentioned before, the high voltage version of ST Spin32 F0 family offers two package options. 72 leads QFN 10 by 10 package with pitch 0.5 and 1.8 millimeter creepage for the critical pins. The 64 leads 2 QFP 10 by 10 package with the pitch 0.5 and creepage 1.12 millimeter. The list of evaluation boards includes all versions of high voltage ST Spin32 and the firmware covers both FOC and a six step commutation algorithm, one shunt and a free shunt configuration, and sensor and sensorless application. The summary table and tools overview should help you to figure out what you need to get started. I would like to stress one key parameter the ST longevity commitment. For the ST Spin32 F0 high voltage drivers, it is 10 years longevity commitment. All evaluation boards have the same architecture. They included a stealing debugger, feedback network, power stage, power supply, and of course, the high voltage ST Spin32 F0, in this case, ST Spin32 F0601. 
This board is using single shunt sensing. The EV Spin 32F0601 S3 has three shunt resistors and the power stage supply voltage can be within the range 50 volt and 280 volt AC. EV Spin 32F0602 S1 has a single shunt configuration and has dual footprint either for MOSFETs or IGBTs. The last evaluation board EV Spin 32F0251 S1 is also single shunt configuration with dual footprint for IGBTs or MOSFETs. The board allow the load up to 16 amp and the ST-Link is detachable. My presentation is over. Thank you very much for your attention. And now it is Rosario's turn. After that, we will have a Q&A session. Have a fun. Hello and welcome to this uh, video presentation where we will show how to spin a permanent magnet synchronous motor using the motor control software development kit. My name is Rosario Tanasio and I'm an applications manager at ST Microelectronics. So what is the motor control workbench and how does it benefit a designer of motor control applications? The motor control workbench is a GUI that is part of the motor control software development kit or SDK. This also includes the FOC library for permanent magnet synchronous motors. The ST motor control workbench provides an easy way to configure motor control application software and matching hardware setup. The project generated by the tool is compatible with the STM32 CubeMX for further extension or modification. The motor control workbench supports many of the boards of the motor control ecosystem or can also be used with the custom boards. It has a large number of example projects to start with. The user can create a new project, input the motor parameters, set the signal conditioning current circuits for current and voltage sensing, and also leverage on an embedded tool for the tuning of the PI controller parameters. This is also an interface that allows to monitor the application once the motor is spinning. The FOC library includes both the sensorless or censored control for speed and position control using all effect sensors or an encoder. The software reduces the design effort and time needed for application setup. Let's check the software requirements. First of all, we needed to have a laptop with a 64-bit Windows 7 or Windows 10. Then we needed to have a development environment. We recommend either a IAR embedded workbench for ARM or the STM32 Cube ID. We will have to download and install the Xcube motor control software development kit full version. You can do that from st.com, register and get approval, which should take a few minutes. Then download and install the STM32 Cube MX as well as the ST-Link drivers. And finally, download and install Java JRE 8 for Windows. Okay, next uh, is uh, an overview of the hardware setup. Uh, we need our laptop with the software that we've just mentioned uh, installed, uh, motor control workbench uh, and uh, STM32 Cube MX. We need a USB cable. We need uh, also a demo board. Uh, for this uh, specific test, we have uh, selected the STSPIN3201, which has uh, the STSPIN32F0 and um, six uh, FETs, uh, low voltage uh, FETs that uh, implement uh, a three phase uh, inverter. The topology is uh, the three shunt one for this specific board. Uh, as you can see, the board uh, is a general purpose one. Uh, it has a lot of test points, uh, a potentiometer to close also the speed feedback loop, uh, as well as uh, the um, connector for the all effect sensors or uh, uh, the encoder, plus uh, uh, three uh, push buttons that can be used to enable or disable the application uh, or reset the microcontroller. The ST-Link is also uh, present on this uh, on this board, uh, so you don't need uh, an external an external one. And uh, 
uh, we needed to supply this board uh, with uh, a power supply that is capable of uh, delivering 12 volt uh, uh, and a minimum current of uh, 1 amp. And the motor that we have uh, used for this demonstration is a BLDC, uh, low power 4.2 watts, uh, but capable of reaching 8000 RPM. It has uh, four pole pairs. The oscilloscope uh, is also necessary as well as a current probe that we will use down the road for uh, tuning. For the wiring, you need to connect your power supply cables to J2. Be careful, the admissible voltage range is 8 to 45 volts DC. The motor winding faces need to be connected to J3. And uh, the USB cable to J5 uh, on one end, on the other end, any of the available USB ports on your laptop. I have placed the current probe on phase V. Uh, the laptop is, uh, as you can see, on the right side, running the model control workbench. Uh, and um, this is uh, the basic uh, the basic setup. The motor is shown here. Uh, it's a little black cylinder. The board is already supplied as uh, the red LED uh, show. The motor I've used for this demonstration is available on Anime Automation website if you want to buy one for a few bucks and repeat the, the test. It has a rated voltage of 12 volts, uh, rated speed of 1000 RPM. The peak current is 2.2 amps, rated torque is 0.7 ounces per inch, the line to line resistance is 3.5 ohms, and the line to line inductance is 0.7 milliaries. The back EMF constant is 0.8 volts per kilo RPM. And uh, this motor has uh, uh, four pole pairs. One thing to notice is uh, the back EMF constant very often is not available on the data sheet of the motor manufacturer. Um, if this is uh, the case, uh, like uh, for example for the Anime Automation motor, you can always measure it. The way to do that is to spin the rotor at constant speed. I typically use uh, a drill to do that and a digital oscilloscope to measure, to measure first to phase voltage and uh, the electrical uh, frequency. The other important thing to notice is that this data sheet provides line to line resistance and inductance, but the motor control workbench uh, uses a per phase model. Therefore, you will need to divide these values by two in order to use them properly with our software tool. Now, I want to go over the workflow that needs to be followed for successfully spinning the motor. First of all, we need to create a new project with the model control workbench, and then we needed to set up the model control workbench by inputting the motor parameters, uh, setting the current sensing and the protection, then working on some drive management settings, such as uh, selecting a proper switching frequency for our application. We needed to set the type of speed sensing, startup parameters, and the serial communication. Once we have done this, we can generate, the compile, and download the code into the STSPIN32 F0. If all of this is done correctly, we can connect the board to the motor control workbench. One thing I want to mention is that if for any reason the motor parameters are not available, you can use the ST motor profiler. This is available for download on our website, or you can proceed with manual characterization and extraction of these parameters. Uh, the uh, IOC file that is generated by the model control workbench can then be imported in the STM32 CubeMX for code expansion, further code uh, uh, generation, or uh, uh, tuning. Uh, the final code can then be uh, uh, compiled by using IR or Kyle or, uh, for example, our STM32 Cube IDE and finally uh, downloaded on uh, the microcontroller. Um, if everything is done correctly, as, as, as I have uh, shown here, uh, and you try to spin the motor and you get an uh, uh, error, from the motor control workbench uh, uh, monitor, don't get discouraged that this is uh, quite normal. There are still a couple of steps that need to be done. First of all, we need to perform the tuning of the current regulator. Then we need to successfully switch from open loop to closed loop while using the torque mode. And the final step is to tune the speed regulator. 
now that we have uh, talked about the tools, uh, we can proceed with the generation of the code using the motor control workbench. We start from a new project, and uh, uh, we can see from this window that we have the option of selecting either a custom board, um, both for the control and the power, or one of our, uh, for example, nuclear boards or one of our uh, expansion boards dedicated to motor control applications. The other option is to select a complete inverter board, which features both the control and the power stage. Among the featured board, you will find the STSPIN 3201. We select it and we click on OK. The model control main page will now load up and will allow us to change the, and configure the application parameters. We start from the motor once. Uh, we uh, set the number of uh, uh, pole pairs, the maximum speed, the peak current, the supply voltage, the phase resistance, the phase inductance, and finally the uh, back EMF constant according to what we have seen in one of the previous sections. When we are done, we click on OK. Here we can also uh, select to use the bus voltage sensing uh, to have um, overcurrent protection and eventually also temperature uh, sensing for uh, a protection. Uh, from the current sensing tab, we can uh, define the current reading topology. We have three options, one shunt, three shunt, and two insulated current sensor. The board is a three shunt topology, so we'll keep this. We also keep the sensor resistor value, uh, 10 milliohm, and the amplification uh, network gain of 7.7 .7 that is provided by some external op-amps mounted on the Stival Spin 3201. In a general uh, application, uh, we will uh, um, customize both the value of the shunt resistor and the application on board in order to exploit um, uh, as much as we can the dynamic of the A2D converter. Once we are done, we click uh, on the next uh, tab, which is the speed sensing one. Here we can uh, choose between uh, sensorless or sensor FOC, for example, using all sensor or quadrature encoder. We'll keep uh, the sensorless observer plus the PLL and move on to the next uh, uh, settings. From the fuel and drive management uh, tab, we select uh, the drive uh, uh, settings. Here we choose uh, to go with a switching frequency of 15 kilohertz. Um, we uh, can also uh, define the execution rate as a speed regulator. We keep uh, uh, one. Uh, we can input, uh, for example, the values of uh, KP and KI for the speed regulator as well as uh, for the uh, torque and the flux uh, regulator. Uh, for now, we uh, use uh, um, some low values uh, for uh, uh, KP and uh, especially KI, so I modify KI here. Also here we start from uh, low values and here as well. And uh, uh, we have also some divisors. Uh, I will use uh, uh, the bigger number for uh, all uh, the integral terms uh, of the three PI uh, regulators. Uh, on this uh, part uh, of uh, uh, this window, I can uh, select uh, the target speed. I will use uh, 2000 RPM. And uh, the cutoff frequency, I will uh, uh, start from 6000 radians per second. Very important that the execution rate, if I keep it to one, the control will be executed once every PWM period. Otherwise, if I choose two or three, it will be executed once every two PWM periods or three PWM periods. At this point, uh, we are done with this. Next, we want to define the startup parameters. So here we have uh, uh, the advanced uh, customized uh, table, which allows us to define, to define five different steps. Here I have already defined the table. In this column, you uh, define the duration of each step. Here you define the speed and here uh, the current. The first step is very important because it allows the alignment of the rotor. It needs to have a longer duration, a final speed of zero, and uh, a current that is 50-60% of the nominal current of the motor. Then uh, in step number two, you start ramping up the speed to 5,005 RPM in this case, uh, with a final current of 1.3. 
then we keep increasing the speed to 1000 rpm keeping the same current and we do that the first step number three and four and finally we approach our final speed by using a final speed of 1800 rpm with the final current of 1.2 we start executing the controller algorithm from step number three uh, and uh, we define a minimum output speed that is slightly higher than the final speed of step number three, so 1,020 RPM. The last thing, uh, we define the estimated speed band tolerance uh, in the, the, these two menus here. Uh, we want uh, to have um, a kind of wide tolerance, at least in the initial phase, so I've used 150% and 50% as upper limit and lower limit. Once we are done with this section, we can uh, close this window and move to the next. At this point, uh, we have everything we need to generate the code. To do this, uh, click on the blue arrow, which will start the generation of the code. At this point, you need to choose your debugger, uh, IR in my case, and click on Generate. Okay, once the generation is completed, we can open, uh, we click on Open Folder, click on eWorm, and uh, select uh, uh, the project. Uh, IR will open. The next thing we have to do is uh, rebuild uh, the whole project. Uh, this will take uh, uh, one or one minute or two, and after that uh, we have to uh, compile and uh, uh, flash our stspin32 with the generated code. To flash the microcontroller, just click on this green arrow. Okay, once done with that, we can uh, simply uh, go back to the motor control workbench, can close the CubeMX, and uh, we can. Uh, uh, open the monitor by clicking on this icon. To connect the board, click on this icon. Okay, at this point the board is connected. We can uh, click on the advanced tab and try to spin our motor using uh, the torque mode. Okay, so let's set a current reference, for example 120. We hit the set the reference and then start the motor. You will see that the motor will uh, uh, increase its speed and then after a while uh, we will uh, see this speed feedback error appearing on the left side of uh, our monitor. This is normal with the motor control workbench and it's due to the fact that the PI parameters as well as the observer constant C1 and C2 are not uh, yet uh, tuned. So we need to do that next. Let's proceed with the tuning. In the configuration tab, you have also a tool to do uh, the tuning of the PI loop parameters. In order to do this, uh, we will uh, use the five steps of the rev-up table that will com be configured with the final speed equal to zero for all the five steps, and a final torque value that uh, can be uh, defined using uh, uh, this uh, uh, formula that you can see here. So, well, the final, the final torque is equal to 32,535 divided by the max readable current, which in our case is 21.4 amps, times the nominal motor current, which is 2.2 amps. Okay, at this point we use a final torque for step 1 of uh, 1200, uh, with a duration of initial 0. Uh, for the second step we define a duration of 50 milliseconds. Then uh, we de decrease the torque to 600, uh, and... Uh, we select uh, step number three duration equal to zero and for step number four same uh, uh, final torque value step number three with a duration of 50 uh, milliseconds now we have uh, defined our step function we can go back uh, to the advanced tab start with uh, some uh, low values uh, for uh, uh, the kp and the ki of uh, our uh, uh, PI controller, for example, 150, and put at the zero uh, both the KP and the KI for the ID regulator. Uh, once we have uh, done this, we can hit uh, the uh, start uh, motor uh, uh, tab and observe the response of the controller 
on the oscilloscope. Now you can see that uh, this response is not uh, ideal, uh, it's uh, a little bit uh, slow, and when uh, this happens, it means that you need to increase your uh, uh, KI. So next step will be to bring KI up to 100, uh, we clear the fault and uh, we hit the start motor again. We now observe that the response has improved, but it's still not enough. So we will increase a little bit farther the value of Ki to 200, clear the fault and start the motor again. Now we see that the response starts to have some oscillations. So at this point I will not increase the Ki anymore and I will start increasing the Kp parameter until uh, I find uh, a response that is uh, uh, satisfactory. Okay, so at the end of this uh, tuning procedure I came up with the two values of Kp and Ki. Kp equal to 1500 and Ki equal to 100. Um, at this point uh, I am ready to uh, test again in torque mode. I set the reference to 120, clear the fault and start the motor. Uh, I observe the behavior uh, of the motor by looking at the measured speed and uh, I notice that again the speed feedback error is here. This is uh, happening because we haven't tuned yet the value of uh, C2 of the observer. So this value is currently equal to 24,000. We can start by halving it, repeating the test by clearing the fault and starting the motor until we see that the speed feedback error is gone. At the end of this procedure, I've found that the value of 880 works well for this motor. So I fault, uh, uh, clear the fault, start the motor again, and uh, I can finally now observe that the motor speed is stable, the motor uh, is able to hold the torque, and if I change the torque reference, the motor follows the reference and the speed increases. So at this point uh, I have uh, attuned a uh, current loop. My next step will be that of adding the speed controller uh, to, the, to the system. Okay, so to add the speed controller let's select the control mode speed and uh, let's uh, start with uh, uh, low values of uh, Kp and uh, Ki. We uh, select a target speed of 3000 RPM, uh, we clear the previous faults uh, and uh, we try now to start the motor and see what happens. We can uh, monitor the speed of uh, the motor using uh, uh, the plotter, so here you can see that uh, there is a big overshoot uh, with the current parameters and uh, that the response is uh, very slow. So definitely we need uh, to uh, work um, on the Kp and the Ki parameters in order to improve this uh, uh, current behavior. Uh, to do that uh, we can, uh, uh, for example, start uh, with um, higher values of uh, uh, Kp uh, check again what the response of the motor is when we uh, do a step from 3000 RPM to 1000 RPM and back to uh, 3000 RPM. In this way we can again monitor the speed. We see that now the speed is following the reference quite well and by iterating this kind of a procedure we can uh, achieve a really well tuned uh, motor. So this is uh, it for uh, this uh, uh, demonstration. I hope you have uh, enjoyed it. For more information about uh, uh, our uh, uh, demo boards, uh, our tools, uh, and, uh, and our ecosystem, visit uh, www.st.com.